So today's video, we're going to talk about this computer that I found over here in the trash. So just driving around, just cruising, nothing better to do. Of course, on the Facebook, trying to find some good parts that are for sale. And I found this one in somebody's trash cans. It was just kind of thrown on the top, as you see in the thumbnail picture. And I was like, got to have it. Word of advice, guys, even though sometimes people put things out for the trash, you might want to knock on their door and ask them because I've actually run into that where they've put it on the side of the road and it wasn't trash. They were just trying to air it out. But that's another story. Don't get into that uh, whole complicated mess and get yourself in trouble. So we found this one and this one's a little pretty old. This is a Phenom X4. It's an AMD. This is about a 2007 and it has a whole bunch of stuff inside. We got two video cards, 560 Ti's, a Golden Orb Thermaltake fan, some memory, probably DDR2 if this is the AMD 790 two hard drives and actually a pretty decent case so it's got some potential in the sense that it'll be something that's fun to play with and if anything we actually have a pretty cool case that we can use for another budget flip so now whether you find the computer on the side of the road goodwill uh, estate sale or just trash or you're going through somebody's old garage old auntie ann's garage or grandpa's basement and you find one of these I'm gonna talk about what I do when I get these computers, how to keep myself safe, prevent damage to other components, and possibly have a better chance of getting this thing running. So the first thing to kind of remember is, is that this has been thrown out for whatever reason. Number one, and this is the most scenario that I see all the time is, well, the computer doesn't perform like it used to, it's slow, and I can't use it for what I need to use it for. So most times people just take a perfectly working computer and just toss it out. The other reason that I find is that something happened to the computer, it got damaged whatever which way, and that's why they threw it out. So now that we have this, what do we do? First thing that I always do is when I get these computers is number one, I don't bring them inside the house. And here's why. Guys, creepy crawlies and critters like to make their homes with electronics, especially the old roaches. Those guys, you know, they love to kind of hang out up in here and kind of leave their whole uh, fecal matter all over the place, create issues. So leave it outside, let it air out for a couple of days, and then consider working on it. But even then, there's something else that we need to do. So I'm gonna talk about these tools that I use that I think is important if you're gonna be taking these old computers, whether it's an old Optiplex for a case swap or something like this. So these are the tools that I typically keep on hand and are very important. And let's start with this. Number one, a good toolkit. This ain't no endorsement by no means, but I like the iFixit toolkit. Has all the different types of screwdrivers. And if you don't have one of those, just a regular Phillips screwdriver works really good some thermal paste so if this thing does work and we have to repaste it to try to see what it does or um, test them have some fresh thermal paste because old computers most of the times overheating threw it out and it just needed some thermal paste another thing some type of cleaner i use this one i get this at my old walmart or local stores around over here this works really good and this is not for cleaning the boards or anything but this is for kind of wiping down the case and if you look at this case over here she kind of dirty, she kind of crusty, even the one over there. Ooh, that's got a razor sticker. That's like 20 frames per second right there. So a good cleaner to kind of wipe it down. Now, another thing too is good mask and gloves. And here's why. Number one, we're gonna be using this tool right over here. And this is a blower where they use compressed air or one of these um, data vacs over here. These things work great. And if you're gonna be blowing all this dust out, number one, you don't wanna be breathing nobody else's germs. That's kind of gross and yeah, don't wanna do that. And before they, this computer even enters the house, we gotta give it a thorough cleaning, make sure this dirt doesn't end up in our house. Another thing with these gloves, like I said, this thing can have some spillage, juice action. I mean, all types of fluids that you don't even know about. Maybe a dog walked up on it on the side of the road and peed on the case get some gloves keep yourself clean on that another thing i do i keep one of these brushes over here so that way i can kind of wipe off the dust and we'll talk about that in the process of kind of trying to give this thing a chance another thing isopropyl alcohol so when we do have to get in depth and cleaning it better we can actually take the alcohol cleaned um parts components whatever we got to do isopropyl alcohol i use the 91 percent because well that's what i have works great some good shop towels. I like using this. You can use microfiber towels. Some people use coffee filters. Whatever you decide to do, I mean, good towels to wipe things off is important. And another one that I think is probably one of the most important things, and we're gonna start with this first, a power supply test tester. And here's why. Number one, this power supply has probably been sitting for about 15 years. Maybe it got some usage between there, but this looks like an old power supply. I don't see no name brand on it, and I don't wanna take a chance that I turn this thing on, it fries a component, 
it catches fire which believe it or not that has happened to me i pop turn this thing on i got a pop noise i got smoke I got flames yeah we don't want that so kind of keep that in mind and what these power supply testers do is if there's a short these things will actually shut this thing off real quick everything goes plugged into this so there's nothing plugged into your components and this will let you know if that if you have an over voltage under voltage very handy to have they're on amazon for about 15 20 dollars so definitely a must so now that we've gone through all these tools let's go ahead and let's start with the process so we've had this sitting out a couple of days we've ensured that there's no critters in it so the first thing you want to do is and i can't emphasize this enough guys don't turn this on do not do not do not turn it on without number one dusting it and using a power supply tester number one dust can be conductive and i've run into that where it's just been dusted up it's created issues that is a potential less likely but definitely probable and like i said this power supply tester will keep us from uh having any damage so now what i'm going to do is i've already went ahead and i've unplugged all these cables i have nothing going to the motherboard and what i'm going to do is take out these graphics cards so when i dust everything off i can kind of get all the dust off and kind of see what we have So I got the computer kind of set up where I can take a good look at everything. So let me get a flashlight over here and kind of show you. So now when I'm going through these computers, one of the first things that I'm looking for is number one, spillage action. If uh, water has gotten here, somebody spilled the whole soda juice action, that's the first thing I'm looking for. And what you'll see is you'll see signs of corrosion. You'll see green crusty, some uh, the brown color for the rust on that. And I'm also looking for anything that may be burnt or capacitors that may have been broken off or popped. In this case, um, I know you guys probably can't see it as well as I do. I don't have none of that going on. So that's actually a pretty good sign. Now, opening up the back, we're also gonna do the same thing. Now, in this case, we cannot really see what's going on in the back, but what we can look for is any signs of anything that has spilled. I don't see nothing over here. I don't see nothing right over here. Also check for stickiness there's none of that going on so this tells me that there was a good chance that this computer doesn't have any spill action even check the io over here in the back i don't see anything now it is normal with these older cases to kind of see some to see some evidence of rust and that's just from age or just it being in a humid environment so with that being said, the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna take my data vac over here and we're gonna just dust and blow the air, everything out over here before we go any further. So that's a lot better. And you know, we're not going for perfect right now. The whole point of this is, is that we wanna see if this motherboard works, does this graphics card work, what's on this computer, and we wanna maybe test it and see how well this thing uh, fares out years later. So the motherboard looks a lot better. And if we were gonna flip this computer, obviously after we do this testing, then we would take everything out, give it a thorough cleaning, make it look brand new, and it'd be good to flip. So with the power supply. The power supply, capacitors tend to go bad, they leak, we don't know much about this power supply and from what i could gather i haven't taken it out but it doesn't look like it's any popular main name brand that i'm familiar with it that's why i take these power supply testers i try them out and that kind of saves me from further damaging this if this is damaged not to mention potentially damaging other components another option that you can have if you don't have one of these or you can't get one right away if you have an older power supply that's lying around i do keep one like an evga 600 watt plug them in and that would work good at firing this up. So let's go ahead and let's pop in our power supply tester and let's see if this thing works.
Okay, so we got our 24 pin plugged in. I also plug in the eight pin and also plug in the six pin over here. And this will let me know if these rails are providing proper voltage, if there's an over voltage issue or short. And if there's a dead short in the power supply, which could create an issue, this thing will actually turn on and cycle it right off. And with this one, I believe the way it works is because I just got this one. I had another one that was a lot better, but the way this one works is that it would just beep to let you know that there's a volt, you're not getting the proper voltage or it would just shut off if there's a serious issue with the power supply. So. Let's go ahead, let's hit the button right over here and pray I don't set my house on fire. All right, fan is spinning. And from what I can see, everything looks good. 12 volts is 12.2, five volts. All right, so everything is looking pretty good on this. And like I said, if there was an issue, this thing would definitely let us know. So I feel comfortable using this power supply for this system. Now, would I trust this power supply for a little higher end build? Probably not. All right, so now we got everything plugged in, we should be good to go. Now this power supply for this video card is 560 Ti. It takes three six pin connectors. And unfortunately we got to kind of do this stuff. Not recommended, but for what we're doing, it'll work. Another tool that you might need, and um, I should have added this in the beginning of the video, get an adapter. These have that whole DVI thing going on over here. An adapter like this will allow me to use the HDMI for my monitor. So you might want to keep one of these adapters for DVI and VGA if you're going to be playing with these older computers. So let's pop this in right over here. We're good. And let's see what happens. And we got no power. Nothing's coming on. All right, so let's take a look at this and let's see what we come up with. All right, so I went ahead and took out the graphics card so I can get an idea and see what's going on. Now, when you run into this issue, don't necessarily give up just yet and say that this thing is fried. Go ahead with the troubleshooting process. Now, we're not getting power to the motherboard. And there's two things that it could be. Number one, the most common one is that the power button is probably possibly not plugged in. I went ahead, I took a look, and I'm sure you guys can't see it. And we took out this big connector that they had over here. And long story short, it was in the wrong place. So let's go ahead, let's pop it in. And let's see if it fires up. Still not powering up. So now this is the part where you can start taking things apart, take out the motherboard and start testing it. And I took out this power supply for a reason. And let me show you what I saw. So I'm gonna unplug these red connectors. These are our SATA cables right over here. And it has nothing to do with what I'm looking at, but I saw this when I was messing with the power connector. And let's get a light. If you look, I don't know how well it comes on camera, but that light looks very dim and the camera doesn't pick it up, but it's kind of flickering a little bit. That tells me that there is a power issue. So the power supply tester told us that this is running okay, but I've learned in this that you can be fooled. Even though it works fine with the power supply tester, how does it work with the load, you know, firing it up? In this case, I have my suspicions on this power supply. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, I'm gonna plug in this power supply over here and see if this thing fires up. I have my suspicion that this thing will fire up primarily because of what I'm seeing over here. These lights over here, I have found that when they're dim and they're flickering, that is usually consistent with something that is uh, power related. And in this case, I'm willing to bet it's the power supply. So before I rip out the motherboard, check for shorts, any other types of damage, I wanna test this first.
All right, so let's unplug this. Let's plug it back in here. Before I hear it in the comment section, yes, this is a GameX one, but this is not one of the fake ones. It's actually a pretty good one. It's brand spanking new. This thing works solid. So I know this power supply works. And yes, I know GameX history, but this one's fine. So now let's give it some juice. And you can't actually see it on camera, but the light is brighter and it's not flickering. So let's go ahead, let's power it up. Look at that guys, we got power, we got power. So that tells us power supply is definitely not good. But at least one thing I will speak for the power supply tester is if this was a dead short that could have caused the fire or potentially fried the components over here, that power supply tester would have let us know. That just means that there's something else wrong with this power supply, but that's fine, this works. So now let's plug in a graphics card and let's see if we get a screen. All right, so I went ahead and took out the old power supply. Just kind of show you what we have over here. And this is a Spire PSH75Z VD. 3.3 volts and 5 volts on is 180 watt max. I mean, yeah, it's a power supply. And revision date, uh, this is August of 2014. So this thing is roughly, do my math, what, seven years old and some change yeah pretty shame though would have been fun to just kind of have it lying around as a tester but good thing i keep another one lying around so i went ahead mounted in this power supply got the graphics cards mounted in and the good thing about this one is i have both the cables for the pci express so i don't have to do that whole molex adapter things guys i don't recommend that especially on those higher end graphics cards a lot of potential for bad things so we have everything mounted up i'm going to go ahead and flick the power button my lights which you probably can't see trust me it's bright and green we're looking good let's fire it up and let's see what it does everything's turning on hey look at that look at that we got some post action going on ha ah, sweet so let's get into the old bios bios there we go we are booted up so cool let me go ahead and play with these bio settings real quick and we'll see if these hard drives actually work so let's see what settings we got so now the first thing that we're getting is that the whole um settings from the bios haven't been saved that's usually indicative of the fact that the battery is probably bad on this i mean we're looking at our time and everything's all jacked up 2008 yeah uh, our two hard drives are being picked up. I believe it's 160 gig and a 500 gig over there. And let's see what CPU we're rocking. I know we're rocking the Phenom, but which Phenom are we actually using? Let's see, system information. Our Phenom is the 99, 9550 quad core. Okay, and we got four gigs of RAM. Now that's four gigs of DDR2. So, and we'll be doing that in another video. We'll talk about that at the end. So let's get out of here. Let's just leave these settings alone because uh, We'll have to clean this up a little bit. But guys, it's pretty awesome. We were able to get this thing working and firing for something that was thrown in the trash because of a bad power supply. So now, let's see if there's a boot. Is there anything in the hard drives? Hey, look at that. Nice. All right, we're starting to boot. Let's see if we get any blue screens of death. A couple cups of coffee, a trip to the gas station, a couple of bathroom breaks, and this thing is finally booted up. And that's primarily because of the mechanical hard drives on them. They just were incredibly slow on booting these things up. I mean, we were running the guest account, and this thing probably took like 20 minutes just to load up, and that was the norm back in the day. So now this is running Windows Vista, and it's the Athlon, not the Athlon, the Phenom X4, it's the 9550. And we're gonna be doing a separate video, and you definitely wanna stay tuned for part two of this video where we test this, we see if we could get it able to run any games or do anything in 2022. Now to kind of recap on this, guys, these computers, they're out there. They're being thrown out, trash, Goodwill, secondhand, pick them up. These are great tools to actually learn how to build computers, how to uh, program, just to get your feet wet and get you started. Not to mention that every now and then you'll get some decent parts out of it. In this case, probably the only thing that I will be able to use out of this computer is this case over here. And we're going to be doing a separate video where I take this uh, case and pop in a better computer, better build in it, and then we'll flip it on that. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that. Now, as far as the tips and tricks, dust this thing out, give it a good cleaning, and check for that liquid damage 
damage or anything that may be broken or anything like that before you fired it on. Now the power supply tester, although it misguided us, it actually did what it was supposed to do. And here's why. Number one, if this th if the power supply was bad and it had a short that could short out the components, potentially be a fire risk on that one, the power supply tester would have detected it and would have kept me from turning this thing on because what it would have done was it would have turned on and it would have shut off the power supply immediately to kind of protect itself, especially from overvolts, which I've seen that happen. Also making sure that I don't set my house on fire. But it did tell me the power supply was good, but the motherboard gave me a signal on the fact that that little green light was dim, it was flickering. So that's what kind of led me down to believe that it's potentially the power supply. Could I have taken everything out and diagnosed it one by one? Yes, but considering that this was pretty easy to take out, I had an extra power supply lying around, it was the way to go. And something to keep in mind too, make sure you have old hardware. I keep old power supplies. This one I just wanted to test it and I knew it worked but I just wanted to uh, throw it in there. But keep old hardware lying around in the sense that you can use it to test. Have an extra power supply, maybe an extra graphics card. I keep cheap old uh, HD 4000 series graphics cards and even older that I could just pop in, get a video port, get a display, and make sure that the computer is booting and working as it should. So, some to consider. So guys, Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, definitely comment down below. Let me know your thoughts and any questions that you may have. And um, as always, we'll see what we come up with next.